You might remember that earlier this year, myself and fellow tech junkie Peter Brown built a PC for a mere 550 bucks. Now that was great and all, but you know what's even better? Spending all the money. Yes, that's right folks, forget meager budgets. This video is all about cramming $4,000 worth of high-end tech into a case and then basking in the warm glow of excessive compute power. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to GameSpot's Intel X99 Mega Build. When you're presented with what is essentially an unlimited budget, component choices are, to a certain extent, as much down to personal preference as how powerful they are. That said, when it comes to the ultimate in computing power, nothing can touch Intel's brand new X99 platform and Haswell E processors. They don't come cheap though, starting at 400 bucks for the 6-core i7 with 28 PCI Express lanes and rising to an eye-watering thousand dollars for this, the 8-core i7-5960X with a mammoth 40 PCI Express lanes. Why would you want 40 PCI Express lanes? Well, for those doing triple, quad or 4-way SLI, you can run more cards at higher 16 or 8x speeds. As for the CPU itself, well, this thing is a beast. We're talking 8 cores for 16 threads of processing power, coupled with 20 megs of cache, support for all new DDR4 RAM, making it the only CPU to do so, and a base clock of 3 GHz. You might have noticed though that that clock speed is slower than the cheaper Haswell E chips, and slower than the far cheaper Devil's Canyon i5 and i7s. To be blunt, this CPU is completely overkill for gaming. Most games don't even tap 4 cores, let alone 8, and see much more benefit from faster clock speeds. But this is the bleeding edge of tech, and if you want the very best, or into 3D rendering and video encoding, this is the CPU to get. To go along with Haswell E is a new chipset and RAM, and you'll need to fork out a pretty penny for both. I'm using 16GB of Corsair's brand new quad-channel Vengeance LPX DDR4 RAM that's clocked at 2800MHz and costs $384 a substantial markup from DDR3. For the board, I've gone with EVGA's None More Black X99 Micro at $250. As the name suggests, it's a Micro ATX board, and I'm a sucker for small, powerful PCs. There aren't many mini ITX X99 boards to choose from, and to be honest, all the others looked ugly as sin. There are trade-offs with the EVGA board though, less PCIe slots, RAM slots, SATA ports, and a so tiny it's useless M2 SSD slot, but you can still build a full and extremely powerful system. Speaking of which, what's better than one GTX 980 video card? Oh yes, two GTX 980 video cards coming into over $1,000. But why stop there? How about not one, but two of Crucial's M550 512GB SSDs 260 bucks each, which we're going to hook up in RAID 0 for crazy read-write speeds. We've also got a Corsair HX750i PSU, a H100i CPU cooler, sleeved white PSU cables, Corsair SP120 white LED fans, and housing it all is this frankly epic Air 240 case. After a string of small case disasters, I'm massively impressed with the space on offer inside the Air 240. Not to mention, it looks freaking awesome as well. The total cost? $3,786.77. But what the hell, let's check in some kick-ass gaming accessories too. We've got Corsair's rainbow-coloured K70 RGB keyboard, a SteelSeries Sensei wireless laser mouse, and a SteelSeries H wireless headset to cap it all off. The grand, grand total? $4,381.76. A mere drop in the ocean for bankers, property tycoons, and spoilt rich kids growing fat and lazy off their parents' millions. But just what can you do with a PC like this? Well, let's put it together and find out. <laughs> So here she is folks, one of the smallest, most powerful PCs money can buy. Naturally, with such powerful specs, 1080p gaming at the highest settings isn't much of a challenge, and even running games at 1440p resolution rarely taxed it. To really see what this system could do, we used NVIDIA's Dynamic Super Resolution technology, which runs games at 4K 3840x2160 resolution, and then downsamples them back to 1080p. 
The performance here is similar to running games at native 4K, but you get the same benefits, including little need for anti-aliasing thanks to the increased resolution. For testing purposes, the base strap was bumped to 125 MHz to get the RAM up to 2750 MHz, while the multiplier was bumped to 35, giving us a final clock speed of 4.37 GHz. This gave us a nice balance between speed, power consumption and heat. Under full load, the system pulled 560 watts, with the CPU hitting 68 degrees. Haswell E and GTX 980s are a potent combo, as evidenced by the more than playable frame rates at 4K in every game we tested. Not all managed to hit a solid 60 frames per second, but with a little tweaking, such frame rates are well within reach. The only games not to approach 60 frames per second were Tomb Raider, which hit only around 46 frames per second, a problem largely fixed by disabling stress effects, and the ever problematic Crisis 3, because Crisis 3. It's also worth noting that both Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Watch Dogs suffered from micro stuttering, and it got pretty bad in Watch Dogs. Turning down the texture settings to high certainly helped but I couldn't quite get it as smooth as I liked in time for recording. Bad show, Ubisoft. As for more general computer use, this thing screams. In Blackmagic speed test, I saw peak write speeds of 900 megabytes per second with peak read speeds of over 1,000 megabytes per second. And in Cinebench's multi-threaded test, we saw an impressive CPU score of 1,726, easily beating out stock Xeons and Devil's Canyon i7s. So yes, this is a killer PC when it comes to certain highly multi-threaded tasks. But the real kicker here is that Intel's X99 platform and Haswell eCPUs push poor old AMD even further down the performance pipeline. And the company isn't catching up anytime soon. Sure, this system is overkill for the vast majority of people. And even those who have the need for 16 overclocked threads on the desktop may find it hard to justify $1,000 of CPU. But being sensible isn't what Haswell E is about, and neither is this PC right here. You might not ever tap into all its power, and you certainly won't max it out while playing games at anything less than 4K. No, Haswell E and Nvidia's GTX 980s are like many of the finer things in life. Expensive, exclusive, and oh so lustworthy. Its tech will eventually trickle down into cheaper products, but for now, if you want the absolute best in computing, Intel's Haswell E is it. Thank you.